Gentleman from California seek recognition. I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute and to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, 35 years ago, I fulfilled my American dream to own a business when I opened a small deli when I was only 20 years old. As a former small business owner, I understand how tough things can be, even in the good times. Running a small business taught me two important lessons. First, you were the first to work, last to leave, and the last to be paid. Second, your margins are tight, and high taxes too often make it impossible for Main Street to beat the odds. These lessons which inspired me to enter the public service come to mind as we mark Tax Day. We should be on track for an incredible comeback. From jobs to vaccines, President Biden inherited an economy that was moving in the right direction because of Operation Warp Speed and the Tax Cuts and Jobs Acts, which created the best economy in more than a generation. But the policies of the current administration has squandered all that progress. Bidenomics have made a mess of the economy, transforming what should have been a strong comeback into a serious crisis in less than six months. First, Democrats jammed through $1.9 trillion of the so-called rescue plan that continued to give taxpayer-funded handouts to people to stay home and do nothing. When he signed this spending package into law in March, President Biden promised America that help was on the way. But for business owners across the country, help wasn't on the way. Help wanted signs were. Describing his struggle to hire employees, Road Hall, the CEO of Elaine Candles, told his local paper last week, we have had more than 100 positions open since the start of the year. And just recently, we increased sign-on bonus to $1,200 for hourly positions, in part because we are competing with an entity that can print its own money, the federal government, and its $300 extra per week additional unemployment benefits. Sadly, this isn't unique just to Mr. Hall. It is the same story I hear from businesses nationwide. In a matter of months, we went from the highest job openings on record in March, 8.1 million. Remember, that's the same month that President Biden signed his bill that he thought help was on the way. To the biggest job report miss in more than two decades. Unemployment actually increased despite the record number of openings. For the brief moment during the pandemic, it made sense to encourage people to stay home. But now, in May 2021, it defies logic. We should not tax the people who are working to continue to pay people who choose not to. Another concern I'm hearing from businesses and workers is rising inflation. Consumer prices in April saw their largest increase in a single month since 1981. Soaring by more than 1%. Inflation taxes every single American. Especially affects those with the least income the most. But remember what President Biden promised. He wouldn't raise taxes on families making less than 400000 By causing inflations to rise, President Biden has broken that pledge. And we are less than five months into this administration. Madam Speaker, any economics class would tell you the worst thing to do is exactly what the Bidenomics has done to this country. You inherit one of the strongest economies, a GDP growing, and you actually do the opposite. You pay people to stay home. You inflect more money into the economy from government, which only drives up inflation. We have not seen something like this since Jimmy Carter took this country into a stagnation. Now Americans are paying more at supermarkets, hardware stores, and gas stations. And it's only been five months. 
In fact, we have a serious gas shortage in a nation that was recently energy independent. Could you imagine, Madam Speaker, becoming President of the United States and having a country that's energy independent, that's actually sending natural gas to other nations, to waking up and no gas in the gas lines in America? Not because Congress passed a bill, but because you signed an executive order. Madam Speaker, I remember wanting to see my grandmother one day. It was back during the Jimmy Carter years, and my father told me no. And I asked why we couldn't drive to see Grandma. Because our license plate ended in an even number, not an odd. It's the only other time you can compare what's happening in America today. 17,000 gas stations nationwide were completely emptied out. The average price of gasoline remains above $3. This is the highest gasoline has been since the last time Biden was in office. In California, the average was $4.12. And in Virginia, prices were as high as nearly $7 a gallon. It didn't have to be this way. He didn't have to attack the hard-working Americans in the energy industry. His own Secretary of Energy said pipelines were good even though he, did, he ended the XL pipeline. And went after the ability for Americans to even drill on federal land. So now Russia is sending gasoline to America? Does that make any sense? To make our enemies stronger? Why Russia builds up thousands of troops along the border of Ukraine? Or enter a negotiation with Iran who supplies missiles to shoot at our allies? Instead of priming the pump, Bidenomics has emptied the tank. From, from inflation to gas lines, the American economy today looks like it did in 1979, then in 2019. When wages were rising, businesses were growing, and unemployment was at record lows. None of this is an accident, you see, Madam Speaker. It is a direct result of bad federal policies to distorted incentives and prices. Yet President Biden, Speaker Pelosi, and other Democrats still want to tax and spend more. Even the most liberal economists tell you that's wrong, which very seldom happens. They decided to propose another $5.2 trillion in new spending, as if there's a bottomless cash pit for politicians to draw on. They also decided to propose the largest tax increase in American history, including making the corporate tax rate the highest in the world. Higher than France, higher than Venezuela, a socialist country, and higher than communist China. Madam Speaker, why would the Democrats and Speaker Pelosi want to give China a benefit over America. I don't understand why we wouldn't look after American workers first. These proposals reflect a fundamental difference between Republicans and this new socialist Democrats. Republicans believe that there is dignity and value in hard work and risk-taking. Democrats believe that process comes by forcing people to be dependent on their government. That's not progress, to force somebody to be dependent on government. And they want to control the decisions you make. When you can work, when you can drive, whether you should wear a mask, and it doesn't matter what the science or the CDC says. If Speaker Pelosi has the power, she'll enforce it on you. They want to know what you can read on the internet and what you can teach your children. But look at history. 
I don't see a single country where Democrat socialist ideas worked before. They've all been failures. And my greatest fear is the direction that you're sending America. In a few five months, America goes from energy independence to having gasoline stations without gas. From an economy where you've done nothing would grow back to creating inflation we haven't seen in decades. To empowering our enemies to only harm our allies. You have more job wanted signs in America, 8 million, and you missed the jobs report, the worst we've seen in decades, by the action taken on this floor. And the hard part about it, Madam Speaker, is we warned you. We told you what would happen. We told you you were going to create inflation. We told you you were going to kill American jobs. You're going to reward people not to work. I've never been a believer in participation trophies. They don't work. They don't help. And certainly, to those small businesses that have struggled to survive, you're crushing them. Every indication, every number shows it. And to sit here on the floor and say, you will not raise their taxes, you're doing it right now. You're hurting the most vulnerable. Gas prices higher, the bread, the lumber to even build the house, you're pricing them out. But the recent surge of bad economic news and what should be a robust recovery is a warning sign that your ideas are not working now. The last time inflation was this high, Joe Biden was vice president. The last time gas prices was this high, Joe Biden was vice president. We found the common denominator as President Biden's bad policy. Unfortunately, instead of learning from history, President Biden and Democrats are choosing to repeat it. That was one of the low points in America. When inflation was high, interest rates were there, and the rest of the world questioned whether America was what they used to be. We proved what policies could matter. Incentive to work. Let people keep more of what they earn. Make America energy independent. What's so amazing to me, when President Biden was elected, he had Operation Warp Speed. He got a vaccine, and he was vaccinated before he was even sworn in. He had millions of the vaccine being produced. He had an economy rising, coming out of the COVID pandemic. He had more job wanted signs. If he literally did nothing, America would be stronger. But he took the wrong actions, led by the socialist Democrats of this floor, Madam Speaker. Now America's hurting. The only thing I ask, study history. Listen to those who are creating jobs. Take the incentive away where government is everything and unshackle what holds us back and let Americans have the freedom they deserve, desire, and prove that the next century will be ours once again. I yield back.